And it is a good morning. You're listening to Power Talks, where talk is real, truth is in the talk, and there is power in truth. And the sun is shining here this morning, and it is a good morning. Good morning, Melody. Every morning is a good morning, especially when I get to share it with you and to the listeners. Oh, it's getting some brownie Aww. points. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd, our producer, too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We love Todd. <laughs> and... uh I wanted to talk about some things today. Well, I don't know if I really want to talk about these things today, but the headlines, you know, some things just never change. It seems like from day to day or year to year, election to election, the headlines. Now, okay, a few things might be slightly slanted differently, but it's still the same topics. Uh, No evidence for Russian collusion. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was fired, and Mike Pompeo was hired. Democrat candidate in California is a grandson of a terrorist. (laughs) That's kind of scary. And tariffs are good or tariffs are bad. I mean, it depends on what website or who you're looking at. Planned Parenthood still receiving taxpayer money to the tune of $1.5 billion in the last three years. Right to work in the bullying unions, unions and shall we bail out old Obamacare. I mean, it's just the same topics. We've got the Republicans in there, and I'm telling you what, we've got the majority, and we're going to get rid of Obamacare, and we're going to get rid of parent parenthood, and we're going to do this and do that. And what has happened? Not a thing <laughs> with them. Not a thing has happened with them. <laughs> them, <laughs> they. <laughs> uh, you're fired up this morning. I am fired up. I just, you know, uh, last night you listen and, and they've got, they're all about this uh, Republican intel that they've come out, you know, that there's no evidence, 150 page report, uh, that there's no evidence of collusion. Uh, it says that the Republicans in the uh, House uh, Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence have completed a 150 page report. I wonder how long that took them. Lawmakers assert there is no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russian government, and the report will be will also detail how the infamous Steele dossier made its way from Russian sources to the Clinton campaign. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just the same old story. And I, you know, it's not that I don't think we need to get to the bottom of these things, but I just I'm beginning to think everybody's guilty. Just hang them all, hang them all. I know I'm not supposed to say that. Melody told me I can't say that. But by their by their big toe. <laughs> well, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was I thinking that on the radio. <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know, they know me. I was thinking instead of a big beautiful wall on the border, maybe we should have a big beautiful gallows in D.C. No. I know you don't but like you that. Know- well, you know what? I mean, certainly if the crime uh, fits the punishment, you know, then so be it. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, this stuff about the, you know, the um, collusion and, you know, you still got the Democrats. They have their investigation or committees or whatever you want to call it. And this doesn't stop Mueller's investigation. That's still going to continue. And he is. It is a witch hunt. There is no doubt about you know, it. And, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. It would happen in this administration, other administrations. It's just government. It's Washington. It's D.C. It's politics. But, you know, it didn't happen in the Obama Not administration. Not saying I agree with it. No, it didn't. You know, you as know. much as the Republicans said they didn't like him and they hated the things he was doing, they didn't do anything about it. That's because the Republicans are weak. Hey, Pompeo was on the committee that investigated. <laughs> the Republicans are Democrats. <laughs> Pompeo was on the committee that that uh, uh, I don't know investigated Hillary into Benghazi and where'd that lead? You know, I mean, so it's still it, working so on that just, one. You know what? They're 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 all the same. It doesn't change. It's not uh. going to change. But I did get the conclusion. They don't even change the names to protect the guilty. <laughs> I still want to know where $15 million went to cover up these guys, these politicians' love affairs. Um, yeah, that kind of went to the wayside really fast, didn't it? That one got off of the headline really fast. <laughs> well, well, Rex Tillerson is out. I'm not, and, done. I'm, not, I'm not done with Russia. Oh, go ahead. Go after Russia. Well, 
I did come to the conclusion of because everyone really agrees that they they did interfere. I mean, it's not the first time. I mean, we can go back and there's proof that our voting machines have been tampered with and so forth. But this this election will blame the Russians. But I and oh, I know people who really truly support Trump. Um, is going to get angry with me for saying this. But I, but I, part of it also is I think Trump has met his match with Putin. And I don't think he wants to really mess with Putin. And uh, a man like Trump knows his adversaries. And uh, and so that's the only thing that really makes sense. Um, so if you don't want to say it's because of business, you don't want to say it's uh, because of money laundering, you don't want to say it's, uh, you know, that he, he really does remain quiet. Even with this uh, Tillerson deal, there was things said about Russia and everything, and, and, and Trump really remains cool and, and so forth. You know, you have to admit that's true. Yeah, I get there were sanctions and stuff like that, but I wasn't really think that was part of uh, he, he didn't want to do it, I don't believe. And I think he's... I, Trump believes he met he Putin is a counter equal to 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 Trump. I Putin is a counter equal, and that's the only thing that makes sense. What does hmm. it mean? What does it mean? Um, Who knows? <laughs> I don't know what it means. Well, no, it is important to understand. Well, how I mean, view. yes, it is. But you know, it's like we've said on some of these other things. Time will tell. We the, can't predict the, the future. Part, now, we know that things aren't good, but we can't predict the future, not in, in a timeline anyway. But understanding their relationship also connects the dots, helps mm-hmm. connect the dots. So when we see things getting done with North Korea, I, I'm still in the belief it's all due to the pipeline going down from Russia down to South Korea. It has to go through North Korea. I think that's a big part of it. And even now, this all went on with Tillerson on Friday. Um, well, you can make that announce, but anyway, that was just my observation. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you're on it. Go for it, girl. Well, I think everybody knows Tillerson was fired. Uh, he knew about it. Uh, he was replaced uh, by the CIA director. Now, that makes me just uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you really... <laughs> huh? That is a little concerning. And, you know, but anyway... <laughs> And the person who took over the CIA, she's nasty. <laughs> I mean, when you read some of her file, and but I, what is her I, name again? I'm going all I'm going uh, all all over the the place. Her name is Gina Haspel. She's an intelligence officer, and she's the one that is replacing Pompeo at the CIA. She currently is the deputy director. And she was appointed back in February of 2017, and now she is the director of the CIA, and she's the first woman to hold that position. Well, she does have, uh, she actually ran a black site CIA prison that was located in Thailand back in 2002. Uh, the site was codenamed Cat's Eye and held suspected Al-Qaeda members uh, two of them for a time. The Senate Intelligence Committee's report on CIA torture specifies that during their detention at that site that she was in, that she ran, uh, these guys were you know pretty tortured and so forth and whatnot, and uh, uh, they were not in any possession of any useful intelligence. So, <laughs> but she, I like that wording. <laughs> they were not. <laughs> But but on but June of last year, the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights called on the public prosecutor general of Germany to issue an arrest warrant against Haspel over claims she oversaw the torture of terrorism suspects. The complaint against her is centered on the case of uh, the the Saudi national Abu Zubada, and he's he's the one that got beaten up pretty good with uh, all the waterboard. So she's a tough cookie. She's a mm. tough cookie. And um, so, um, you know, and that has been her history in the uh, CIA and as an intelligence officer. So um, I don't know if there's any other interesting uh, information about her, but, yeah, she'd, she'd scare me. <laughs> and I haven't been able to... Just throw your flip-flops at her. <laughs> She'll run away. <laughs> she scared me. Um but um, but there are tapes, uh, and she ordered the the destruction of, of tapes that were made during this uh, uh, black site CIA prison 
uh, in Thailand. Mm. So that goes on everywhere. That goes on yeah, every day. And in every and, nation. But, and, you know, and, we... and, and, you know, I, I, you know, what can I say about it? Do, do I know, think it's correct? Um, um, I mean, I know the CA is not a good agency. So CIA. I can't can't condone her behavior in running a black op, a black site CIA prison, you know, and, uh, well, yeah, the CIA is probably involved in more of our problems, and they create the problems, they start the problems, um, so. Well, they were involved in the uh, uh, situation with the FBI regarding all this, (laughs) the dossier and all this other stuff. I mean, they were involved in that as well. You know, so it's. I don't know. They are I, part of the deep state. Well, you know, and another thing that um, that even scares, more. So. Go ahead. <laughs> even more so. Mm. Deeper than the deep state. Deeper, deep and wide, deep and wide. Um, this California candidate, <clears throat> and he is uh, his name. I don't know if I could even pronounce it. Amar Kampa Najar, and he has said to, it says here if the apple doesn't fall far from we. You know, the expression, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and they hope that that's not true with this guy. Because his grandfather was one of them that masterminded the 1972 slaughter of 11 Israeli athletes in Munich at the Summer Olympics. And now, of course, he's running on the, he's in, of course, Southern California Democrat and the 2018 primary candidate for California's 50th congressional district. He's running against, um, um, Hunter, Duncan Hunter, the Republican, he says he's pro-choice. He says he favors gay marriages. Uh, He dislikes any border law and wants Medicaid for everyone with no idea how to pay for it. Um, This guy is kind of a a bad dude, but then it goes on. I had not heard of him, but I, I may just not have remembered his name. It says it will come as no surprise to know that he was Obama's campaign deputy regional director since he, too, had ties to extremists of the Islamic faith. And after Barack Obama took office, uh, Kampa Najjar was um, chosen to serve as head of the Office of Public Affairs of the Employment and Training Administration. Well, now he's running for the 50th district there in uh, in the state of California, of course. Um you know, it's scary. It really is scary who is running for office. I mean, I know we pick on the Republicans and the Democrats, but when you start looking at the individuals and and their ties and, and some of the uh, shenanigans they pull, all of Congress, like I said before, presidents come and presidents go. Congress stays and stays and stays, and they have cost us liberty. They have cost us our Constitution. They have cost us tax dollars. I mean, this thing with... Uh, uh, Planned Parenthood and $1.5 billion as, you know, the Democrats are screaming after this uh, shooting in, at the school in Florida that NRA has blood on their hands. $1.5 billion and they have uh, taken how many lives? I think I it was uh, six point something million lives um, Babies, I don't have my paper in front of me. I can't remember the numbers since uh was um I can't remember the date. I'm gonna have to look that up real quick. But anyway, they've killed all these babies. Enough to populate New York, I think is what it said. Um and we say nothing. In fact we pay them. We pay them tax dollars. One point five billion dollars in tax money in the last three years. I hear music. We're going into a break. Melody and Beth Ann are kind of on a roll. We're just sick of the headlines. (laughs) You're listening to Power Talk, 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. And Melody and Beth Ann, we're going to be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. 
Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and (laughs) FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Get that mixer going, girl. (laughs) She said she wanted to uh, add it. No, I do want to continue with the the elimination or the firing of of Tillerson because I think uh, having Pompeo as a replacement... Uh, it should bring some concerns, um, you know, and, and Pompeo is even an Italian, which I am, so <laughs> I like him for that. But he's a very intelligent man. Um, he, is, he, you know, received a Juris Doctor degree from Harvard Law School. Um, he graduated, uh, he worked as a lawyer for Williams and Conley. Um, he also graduated, graduated first in his class from the uh, West Point uh, he did major in mechanical engineering. That was in 1986. So he has a lot in common uh, with President Trump. Uh, but in 1998, which really wasn't that long ago, uh, along with other West Point alumni, Pompeo founded Thayer Aerospace and Private Security. It received a 2% investment from Koch Industries. Mm. In 2006, he sold his interest in Thayer, which was renamed Next Tech Aerospace, and became president of Century International, an oil field equipment company, which was also a partner with Coke Industries. Mm. So I see Coke Industries, they're grooming him. Hmm. And this was uh, began 20 years ago, and uh, so in you know then he gets into politics in 2010. So four years le- four years after he sold his interest and uh, um, and became president of Century Indus- International uh, and a partner of Coke Industries, four years later he goes into politics in 2010. He was a Kansas Republican primary for the 4th District Congressional seat. He defeated uh, State Senator Gene Schodorf, who received 24%. Uh, it has a breakdown. I don't think that's really important. But um, 
there was a lot of money coming in on his election. Guess hmm. who? <laughs> <laughs> um, during the campaign, Pompeo received $80,000 in donations from Coke Industries and its employees uh, in 2012 as he continues through his uh, um, political um, uh, history. Um, and he stays in politics and so forth. Uh, Pompeo uh, has been on the U.S. House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence the United States House Committee on Energy and Commerce, uh, and the following three subcommittees, uh, the U.S. House Energy Subcommittee on, they have so many committees, on Digital Commerce and Consumer Protection, uh, the Energy Committee on Energy, and the House Intelligence Subcommittee on the CIA, and he was also on the United States House Select Committee on Benghazi. Uh, we all know that uh, on November 18th, 2016, announced that he would not. Uh, Donald Trump announced that he would nominate Pompeo to be the director of the CIA, and then he was confirmed in 2017 with a vote of 66 to 32. Um, so he's been traveling around to Turkey and Saudi Arabia. He's met with the Turkish president since he's been the CIA director. He's met with all the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Um, and let's see if there's any other interesting information. Now, his political positions. Pompeo supports the surveillance programs of the NSA, uh, referring to the agency's efforts as good and important work. Pompeo stated that Congress should pass a law reestablishing collection of all metadata and combining it with publicly available financial and lifestyle information hmm. into a comprehensive searchable database. Um, legal and bureaucratic impediments to surveillance should be removed. Uh, and that includes Presidential Policy Directive 28, which bestows privacy rights on, pol on foreigners and imposes burdensome requirements to justify data collection. In terrorism, in 2013, speech on the floor, Pompeo said Muslim leaders would fail to denounce acts of terrorism done in the name of Islam or potentially complicit in the attacks. Um, but the Council on American Islamic Relations called on Pompeo to revise his remarks. Let's see, Guantanamo Bay. Uh, after a 2013 visit to the, pres uh, to the prison, Pompeo said of the prisoners who were on the hunger strike, who were on the hunger strike, it looked to him like a lot of them had put on weight which yeah I never got either but I agree with you there. <laughs> they, um, they did that in Columbia when they had the, the the young man that was doing the hunger strike uh, you know for their safe spaces and such <laughs> he didn't look like he was losing any weight <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Pompeo criticized the Obama administration's decision to end the black sites in which I talked earlier uh, about uh, Gina when she was uh, right. managing one of the black sites, the secret prisons. Um, Pompeo desires regime change in North Korea. Oh. He says it would be a great thing to denuclearize the peninsula and to get those weapons off of that, but the thing that is most dangerous about it is the character who holds the control over them today. So we don't know how he feels about that today. Uh, he didn't like the uh, Iran deal with the Obama administration. Um, he says, referring to the agreement, Pompeo stated, I look forward to rolling back this disastrous deal with the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism. Pompeo also stated that a better option the negotiating with Iran would be to use under 2,000 sorties to destroy the Iranian nuclear capacity. Mm -hmm. This is not an insurmountable task for the coalition, for the coalition forces. So, you know, he kind of signed up with uh, Tom Cotton uh, for that, and we'll see how that proceeds. We know how Mr. Trump feels about Iran and about the deal. Uh, we know the relationship, the tight relationship, that uh, even tighter relationship with Israel. And I think Israel will use, uh, personally, I think Israel will use that relationship uh, to them and to the feelings of now both Pompeo and Trump. Um, uh, so I, I think things are going to get heated very, you know, we might think North Korea is just a... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> a baby and that there really was no threat there at all uh, and that it really will be Iran. But, you know, who's to say at, at this point in time? So this goes on and on about the various uh, uh, how he felt and uh, during his confirmation, hearing things that he said about Russia, Syria and uh, so forth. And uh, but very much along the lines now in 2017, I don't know how people feel about WikiLeaks. But he did refer to WikiLeaks as a non-state hostile intelligence service and described founder Julian Assange as a narcissist, fraud, and coward. And he said, we can no longer allow Assange and his colleagues the latitude to use free speech values against us. Um, well, yes. Well, you know, I have mixed feelings about WikiLeaks, but I do too. None, none of the things that they have ever come out with have been disputed. No, not at all. <laughs> so, you know, I don't necessarily like the fact that he can hack into everybody. It seems like he just has the way. But at the same time, we wouldn't know anything. True. And as far as Edward Snowden, he thinks he should be given the death sentence. <laughs> well, that's kind of, oh, yeah. So well, we have to see. <laughs> Got all so, these I nice mean, those guys are, in charge. <laughs> those are very, you know, those are the Stop same it. views as Trump. Trump, I remember him talking about Snowden and called him a, a traitor, um, and um, that he should have the same outcome. Uh, their views on Iran, so they very much align uh, together in their views, and certainly their West Point ideas so i don't know uh, uh it you know it, it you know should bring concerns and of yeah. course his comments about the uh you know about the uh you know our surveillance and and everything else yeah so i don't know ladies and gentlemen um tillerson yeah he 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 just uh um, he he just wasn't in the same league as, as Trump. Uh, but again, it's another one from his beginnings, and there are, all the beginnings are disappearing, and all those that supported him and helped him to get elected. So, well, I guess some people might think it's a great thing, other might people might think not so much, and other people might think, well, we'll have to remain to be seen. And don't think that the announcement today to fire Tillerson came as a, as a, it was orchestrated. You have the election in Pennsylvania. Uh, took that out of the news like, what? <laughs> there was no tomorrow. And uh, I mean, they knew he was going to be fired in, on Friday. I was going to say, yeah, well, they've been talking about, you know that for a long time and granted he was in south africa but then you know i watched a an interview i can't remember what program it was uh it was an interview pompeo was on one of the morning talk shows and i didn't like him i mean there was just something about him that you know i was just <clears throat> just he was different and of course, that might have been his, you know, inner knowledge of knowing what was happening, and you know, he had a different type of, um, you know, um, way of handling himself. But I don't know. It was, I was just surprised and shocked at some of the things that he said. But anyway, so that was headline news. But it didn't make gold pop a couple bucks so <laughs> <laughs> on the bright side. <laughs> on the bright side of things, you know, we'll see if. Nope, oh, but it couldn't hold it. It couldn't hold it. Uh, uh, market's up 200 points uh, as we move on, and uh, all the news is uh, ingested, digested, and uh, uh, so forth. So we have Sherry calling. In Kansas. Sherry, how are you today? Yes. Hello, ladies. I'm, Hi. I live in the 4th District. Pompeo's those districts. I don't think he should be in government at all. He's too much of a hawk for me. And you forgot that he sponsored the we don't have the right to know if our food is GMO bill. That's right. Oh, that's, that's right. right. I didn't yeah. get I didn't get to I didn't get I skipped I forgot about that point. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We're on a need to know basis and where your yeah. food or meat comes from. <laughs> Yeah, 
apparently there's a lot of things we don't need to know when it comes to Pompeo. Yeah. Uh, I personally, I think it's, it's, it's a very dangerous move. Don't you think that's yeah. characteristic of people that hold positions like he has, like, you know, the FBI and the CIA and some of these high, upper military people, they seem to have that kind of an attitude. Have you noticed that? Not all of them, yeah. but a, a good percentage. Yeah. It's the psychopaths are like cream. They rise to the top. Hmm. Unfortunately. Well, then you can scoop them off and make butter out of them. <laughs> That's okay, what let's say they, they're be. like oil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just saying if the American people would actually wake up and, and get a grip of things, we could scoop it off and, and uh, turn it around. I don't know. Jerry, but anyway, thank you for that. that. Thank you for that reminder. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. <Steve. laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Well, Jerry. you know, there was another uh, Trump firing, John McEntee. He was escorted out of the White House for unspecified security issues. Uh, mm-hmm. He was a personal assistant, uh, John McEntee. And uh, he was escorted out yesterday. Uh, the cause of the firing was unspecified security issue. Other than that, no one really knows why he left. Sarah Sanders declined to comment, saying we don't comment on personal issues. Mm-hmm. So there was another firing of yesterday. Uh, there's reports coming from Tillerson that he really didn't know why he was being fired, that you know he got it through a tweet. And you know what, I'm you know, uh, Tillerson did not speak to Trump before the firing. Um, uh, he was uh, unaware of the reason behind his dismissal. Um, now I have a question. Yeah, I'm going to show my ignorance here. And uh, now, when Pompeo takes over, I mean, we had to go through all this before they approved uh, Tillerson and all this other cabinet members. Is Pompeo going to have to go through that too, or is it because he already held a position in another place that he doesn't have to? I really don't. I, I don't know okay. if he has to be confirmed for that position. His security clearance. I mean, I mean there's no issues totally there. there. So okay. yeah, it'd already be there. <clears throat> but what I believe on the day that Tillerson called Trump a moron back in the late fall or summer or something, they were he was already looking for a replacement. I mean, the I, handwriting was on the wall. The handwriting was on the wall, <laughs> and uh, I mean this does. Um, I don't know. Um, Trump is looking for someone to, uh, um, and I, you know, he was looking for someone to, uh, because Trump was running out of friends in the White House. I mean, if you look at his relationship with Kelly, um, if you look at his re- his relationship with Sessions, if you look at his, I mean, everybody else has left. Um, he needs someone in there to um, cheer him on. And... Um, who who you else know, is in there? Speaking of sessions, just real quickly, the, he had uh, an interview with oh I can't think of her name. She's on late on uh, weekday nights on Fox News. Oh, pretty blonde girl. They're all pretty blonde girls, aren't they? But anyway, she was interviewing. She had a personal interview with Sessions, and he was such a gentleman, you know, because she asked about you know the you know the rough talk he's received from the president and. And uh, he was such a gentleman. Uh, I just can't help but respect the man. I I really, um, he didn't get nasty and say anything back, and not that I expected him to, or to not address it. You know, I don't really want to talk about it. Can we talk about the, you know, the policies and things that are going on? Uh, He did address it, and he he was very gentlemanly about it, and he, he still acted like he's, He's the number one man there, you know, as far as uh, cheering Trump on. And uh, so I just thought it was kind of an interesting interview. I stayed up late to watch that, and uh, uh, I was really impressed with his demeanor. I guess that you would know, be what I would say. We also forgot about Gary Cohen last week. Oh, yes, yes. You know, we forgot about him. And there's something else about the timing of this uh uh I know you don't want to talk about it, but I do think it's important, uh, not for the gossip. Who said factor I didn't talk about it? About, oh, you're talking about Stormy. Talking about Stormy. <laughs> you know, 
Well, the thing of it is, last week when the announcement with the South Koreans uh, came out in the middle of, you know, 8 o'clock, it was dark uh, to make an announcement. I mean, it had to be outside. Why wouldn't they do it? I mean, the whole display and the announcement of that, oh, there's going to be this big meeting at 7 p.m. Eastern. I guess it was 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I mean, it was bizarre, but it took Stormy out of the news. Yesterday, she came back and says, you know, we, we want to give the money back because we want to, you know, I want to be able to talk about this and blah, 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 blah. Now, all of a sudden, this goes on today. She's out of the news again. So, coincidence? I don't think so. And, um, well, and, and, and you've said before there aren't coincidences, but I, I still, she's she's only going to give the money back because somebody else is giving her money. Why, why is it so important to her to talk about this? I mean, this the, happens. But she's not the only one. I mean, you could say the same thing about, uh, you know, all the, the congressmen that, that resigned and so forth. Oh, exactly. I mean, exactly. you know, so, so it might be about money, and I'm sure that it is, but it certainly isn't the first time. Well, for and, the rats, the and, ones and, that are, I mean, and it a porn is a, star. And it, but it's also a view into a person's character. And, I, I, and you know what, I, I hope Melania is, is protected. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, this is not nice to have this, you know, front page news day in and day out. I get that. I'd kind of like to see it go away for, for however it goes away. But the more they try to avoid it, the longer it's going to be in the news. Well, so, and you know, that and, 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 and it really doesn't matter. I mean, you go to any of these high-powered <laughs> meetings and so forth, they're going to have prostitutes in there. I mean, what planet <laughs> are you living on? I well, mean, it's I... just the way of the world. I have believed for a long time, not all of them, but Congress is, <laughs> Congress is involved. The majority of Congress is involved in human trafficking. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are the gangsters that we saw all the movies about in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I believe not, not every single one of them, but I believe the majority of them are involved in these things. And the other side of that coin, you know, where you say that, you know, all of a sudden this comes out and she's quieted, is the other way around. Every time something happens, they bring out another bimbo. I'm sorry. (laughs) They bring out another bimbo that's ready to squeal on somebody, whether it's Donald Trump or one of the congressmen or whoever. You know, they want to squeal on somebody. And uh, so those distractions work both ways. They work both ways. And it's just constant constant i read an article from um oh what is his name tony perkins and he says i don't support trump because i think he's a good role model (laughs) and it was a good article it was a good article but you know you're right the distractions they're there um they're not accidental they're not accidental accidental. and i'm not on either side on either side but you know what always bothers me is if this was Obama, if it was, I mean, oh my gosh, if there was a porn star going out there with tapes and everything, I mean, you, you'd be hearing about it on our side 24-7 too. But yet it's because it's our guy, we don't want to talk about it. You know, it would, you know, and, and I don't think that's, it, hey, bring it to the table, discuss it, and be, move on. You know, we all fall short. I get all that. And certainly that happened a long time ago, and we change as people. The older we get, sometimes we, you know, we do change. So I Mellow. get all that. Hmm? Mellow down. <laughs> well, no, we, we realize our days are numbered, and, and, and you know, we, we're going to have to account for our lives. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people. You see them change close as they get older, realizing that, uh, you know, they're going to have to, uh, you know, you know, meet their maker. And uh, so, um, I don't know, but, you know, it is. It, we're, we're funny people. I mean, if it's on our side, we don't want to talk about it. We, 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 we but that's not the reason I didn't it. talk about it. I'm, oh, just I don't of, mean... I'm, just of, I'm just sick and tired of every time something happens, another one of these girls come out, and they're pointing the fingers at somebody. And, um, you know, whether it's in Hollywood, whether it's in Congress, Democrat and Republican side, or the presidency. You know, it's just a constant thing, and I see them as distractions. I don't think maybe I, I don't talk about them because um, uh, because I'm trying to hide anything. 
it's because I think they're a distraction from what's actually happening. And uh, um, and they're you see it the other way at times. Yeah, well, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what we have to do is we have to put it all together and kind of no, we're try to, to read the, the truth. truth. Yeah, it's, find, it's, yeah. it's difficult. It's it, difficult. It is. You find the truth and you move on. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that that's, you know, I want to find the truth about that fifteen sixteen million dollars. Who was it paid out to and for whom? That's important. I agree. That's important. I agree. You know, there's a guy in Kansas City, there's a politician. He's stepping down because he's he, he was photographed kissing a lobbyist in a bar. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. I don't think we're going to hear that on a day-to-day basis. Kissing up, was he? You know, oh my but God. he resigned. He resigned from his office, and I can't remember his position and so forth. But he resigned, and um, you know, it's you know, and, and you know, a lot of these people are also set up. If you don't have a skeleton going to D.C., you'll have one shortly. You know, because that's what that's how they roll, rule you, control you. You know, they you know they set you up. So you get these skeletons in your closet, you, and you might even think you're doing the right thing or something, and the next thing you know, it's going to come back and Damn. haunt you. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it's it's politics, it's games, it, it's, it, I don't, you know, I'm just an innocent. <laughs> She's innocent. She's I'm so innocent. innocent. <laughs> Well, you know, it is disconcerting, and it, I keep uh, the whole show. I've been thinking about the uh, 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 Alexis de Tocqueville, you know, saying that you know America, when America ceases to be good, she'll cease to be great, and uh, and the founding fathers, you know, saying that this Constitution was made for a moral people, and without that, it will not work, and we're just crumbling. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. The number to call is 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. And we will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation 
the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. David Newton. <laughs> Go ahead. Jeff, Jeff Sessions made one of the most dynamic statements in the Trump administration on that show. He said, well, we know that uh, Horowitz has no power to uh, prosecute. Yes, but he, he has 500 say. people working for him. Some of them are prosecutors. But that, that's not what, what uh, Sessions said. He said, I have appointed a prosecutor from outside the D.C. area that has many, many years in the Justice Department, he will be doing the prosecuting. Yes, he did. He, he didn't give right his up. name, though, did he? No, he didn't give his name. And wow. I, think there, I think the reason that he hasn't been saying anything about it, I listen to Doug Hagman in the mornings. He's really informative. He knows about this. And he said he thinks that uh, this prosecutor was appointed back in August of last year. And I think the reason that Jeff Sessions has been quiet or looking inept is because he's just been waiting and giving these prosecutor time to do his job, which he's doing. I agree. I agree. I think so, too. I have been that's saying that's there my prayer. There are dynamic things coming up on that. So Jeff Sessions so. is doing his job, and he is an awesome AG. He's just subtle. Yeah. Yep. Quiet man carrying a yep. big stick, but he doesn't He doesn't flaunt that stick. <laughs> so, no, he doesn't. I, I, I think so too, David. I have I have thought for a long time and really been praying that that Sessions was uh, very active behind the scenes. So yes, yes, I was always impressed with him as a senator. Him and Rand yes. Paul are the two I like the best. Mhm. I'd have to yes, very much so. But yeah, I think there's going to be some real dynamite. Doug, Doug Hagman was so impressed with what he said on that. He's been playing that show two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Shannon. She does, you know, when you watch those shows, some of them, even when you flip to the business channel, they have the exact same consultants, you know, they're paid for by Fox News, the same ones, but she has a little different, uh, she still has some of the same ones, I'm not saying that, but she has a different, um, her interviews go a little a little differently than the others. Yeah, they do. That, but the I think. thing is, I thought was kind of funny, I don't think Hannity has even mentioned that. I don't no. understand that. It's the same network. You should but know he's, still, he's too busy chasing the dossier and the memos. Oh, and good and grief. Well, it's just constant. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, it does. It does. Mm-hmm. It does. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, David. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thanks, ladies. Thank uh, you. Thank you, David. He may be the hero in the end of the day, you know. He might be. I've always liked <laughs> Sessions. You know? I have and, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and he's abs- You know, his personality. He's he just well, reminds I, me of a man that gets things done. You know, I I've been upset. You know, you got to sit back and you kind of watch and you Take listen to time. all these things. And and so many of them are saying, "Oh, Session needs to be fired. Oh, Session needs to no, step down and do the right thing." And I'm thinking, who are you going to replace him with? Yeah. Who else is there? Rosenstein? <laughs> Who are you going to replace him with? Mueller? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good grief. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and you're absolutely, who Who would you replace him with? And uh, so, yeah. Uh, so. what's yeah, next? So. Anything else? Uh, Anything uh, new? No, that's it. I think we're just going to have to end early. <laughs> Todd, Todd, play the music, please. No, 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 no. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Well, you know, um, the, I wanted to talk a little bit. I, I, I don't want to go into details, but um, it's just the fact that here we are one more time making a decision, Congress, as to whether to bail out Obamacare one more time. And this is coming from the Daily Signal. I also want to. I will also want to say. And this is totally off the topic. This is this is a I'm chasing a rabbit for free here. If you if you look at the headlines and and the uh, the sources that they come from, how many of them are for or against certain topics? Um, I've noticed that the, a lot of the conservative side, uh, political conservative uh, think tanks, they've been on board against um, against the tariffs. 
And then every now and then you see one of these come out that are for the tariffs. And I think it's kind of interesting to kind of watch uh, which ones are for and against. And uh, so I was just throwing that out because this is coming from the Daily Signal, which is the Heritage Foundation, supposedly one of the conservative think tanks. However, it's a topic that we constantly go back to and which should have been eliminated in 2012. The Republicans could have defunded Obamacare and we'd have been done with it. So here we go back to bailing them out one more time. And and the person, the writer here is Edmund uh, Halsmeyer. And he gives three questions that he says Congress needs to ask. And how likely is it that there will be a, a large premium increase this fall if Congress, does, Congress doesn't give the insurers a bailout? So it would be for our good, you know, Melody, because if they bail them out, then our premiums won't go up. <laughs> And the question is, what guarantees do you have from the insurers that if you do bail them out, they will lower premiums? And there's more to that question. I'm just going through this really quickly. And the third question is, what do your constituents who are most upset about high Obamacare premiums think of the idea? Um, I think most of us say, quit bailing all these people out. Uh, but Obamacare should have been defunded. The... Uh, Government, Congress, the D.C. occupiers have no business into health care. That's not what they're there for. And uh, But it, it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the show. Why are we still discussing this? Why are we discussing another bailout of any kind? Why are we discussing yeah, yet that's Obamacare? An that's in an election year. So, well, so we're going to have to promise that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, there, there, I don't know if we have much more time to go. And then I think something that was interesting yesterday, yesterday Trump uh, blocked Broadcom's efforts to purchase Qual Qualcomm. We're going to talk about this probably not today, but tomorrow on the financial survival uh, program. And uh, there was credible evidence that suggests that the deal threatens to impair the national security of the United States. And it really does come down to that 5G technology. And I think we talked about it on this program, too, where this 5G technology uh, was also possible to be uh, nationalized. Mm. So it's interesting to see that this was blocked. Uh, they don't want China to be given the, the opportunity to dominate this 5G. And uh, this uh, 5G, of course, is very important to, to technology and to the future. And uh, so there's going to be a big fight on that one. And uh, But that was a big deal. You had, uh, uh, if the deal had gone through, it would have allowed the Singapore-based Broadcom to purchase San Diego-based uh, Qualcomm. Broadcom and Qualcomm uh, for, 100 and, for 117 billion dollars, and it was the hostile takeover would have been the biggest deal in the history of the tech industry. So um, the the order that he did didn't really fully explain on what the basis was mm -hmm. that the assessment was made, um, but um, you know perhaps it'll come out uh, in a later uh, you know later on in the week and so forth. So make sure you tune into Financial Survival. And uh, we'll probably give a little more details, and uh, maybe we'll also bring a little more education into what this 5G is. Uh, it's it's a it's a big deal, and uh, you have all the the telecoms and you know the Verizons and the Comcasts and everything like this that are fighting. So, you know, it's uh, you you know this is our president protecting um, our area. Or the corporations, and what all the who are these multinational corporations that will benefit? Uh, are they all U.S. companies? So there's there's a lot of questions and a little investigation that goes into there, and um, we'll we'll you know we'll see if uh, um, if there's anything that they can do about it. But uh, so I thought that was an interesting. Uh, Something that's you know just basically overlooked and no one has even really reported on it, and uh, uh, but very interesting. And there was something else going on. Oh, the uh, poisoning of the Russian agents and uh, the UK. Yeah. And Theresa May gave Russia 24 hours um, to make a comment as far as uh, uh, a 24-hour deadline. Uh, on this to um, 
you know, make some sort of a comment or, or she truly believes it was Russia. I don't know what's going to happen if there's no credible response in the 24 hours. Um, she said that they would conclude that his action amounts to an unlawful for use of force by the Russian state against the United Kingdom. And she will go back to the House and set out the full range of measures that they can take in response. So I don't know where that's headed, if anywhere, but here's just another leap in the breeze. It's just another two-by-four flight through that uh, all of a sudden this can bring in NATO. Uh, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's... Uh, we're, we're, I hear music. We're out of time, Melody. It's volatile. Everything is volatile. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann, and we will be back tomorrow morning. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures? and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a re-established Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions, and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using Scripture to interpret Scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border dot org c r o s s cross the border dot org to get your print epub or pdf version of nicholas arthur's new book titled when the third temple is built that's cross the border dot org the book of revelation says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of jesus christ this is at the very heart of firstamendmentradio.com in that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.